Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. August 12th, 2024. Today is the day. Now, if you recall, if you've watched any of my videos, I told you that today is the day that Iran will attack Israel. Now, is that a 100% uh, prediction? But no, there's some significant events that have taken place, and I felt like this would be the day that Iran attacks Israel. So let's get into the news. Uh, boy, I tell you, it's all breaking. I mean, I, that's, I wasn't going to make a video today. I don't know about you. I was, how's that working in Florida in the damn heat? How, have you ever gone through three shirts <laughs> where you, you sweat so damn much that you had to change your shirt three times? Holy moly. I mean, I, oh my God. I mean, I, I am just wiped out. But we're going to get this up because this is important. So let's, uh, let's get into the breaking uh, DD Geopolitics, Hezbollah, Kayakas gets past the Iron Dome. Israeli statement, approximately 30 rockets were launched towards Naharaya and the surrounding area. There were no casualties. A number of strikes were detected in open areas. Happy reminder that each Iron Dome Timir missile can cost up to $100,000 and they're being used to shoot down $300 Kayuska rockets and missing most of them. <laughs> now, what was significant about this was it's being reported, uh, and I think it's confirmed that there were some old Soviet uh, missiles that, because they were a little bit more sophisticated than what Hezbollah has been using, and so that means that the Russians are expanding horizontally to battle the uh, the West. And uh, well, I mean, you could say Israel in a certain kind of way. I mean, but there's a, uh, uh, but they're definitely escalating uh, their the conflict with the West horizontally and the conflict with NATO, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, so, but they're they're saying that there were Russian missiles uh, and there were old Soviet uh, missiles. They weren't like the new uh, Iskander uh, hypersonics or anything like that. But it sounds like Hezbollah uh, was using some Russian hardware in the attack. So that's that's what I heard anyway. Uh, speaking of that, uh, right now we've got the uh, the Theodore Roosevelt carrier fleet uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, they they were set to be relieved, but I'll probably they'll probably be uh, there a bit longer. And then we've got the Abraham Lincoln carrier fleet on their way. Now, when did U.S. Congress declare war on um, the Middle East? I haven't I haven't seen a vote in the Congress. I mean, I, what happened to the U.S. Constitution? I guess. Uh, Joe Biden's administration could just declare war on anybody they want in the world. I mean, I guess we are just an authoritarian dictatorship that uh, can send our troops into battle anywhere in the world. And this is going to be a big one. This is going to be a big one because I, I do feel, and that, I, you know, all kinds of craziness. Iran's just going to hit targets outside of Israel. I don't think so, man. I think this is going to be the big one. And then what happens? And, and by the way, there's an Ohio-class submarine that's got, uh, I don't know how many Tomahawk missiles on it, and that's on its way to the, uh, the Mediterranean. So don't tell me this thing ain't going to blow up. I mean, holy moly. All right, so uh, breaking. DD Geopolitics again. Fire at the Z Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And you're probably hearing a lot of reporting on this, but they, they broke it down, I thought, because we need to put this behind us at this point. But uh, uh, the plant caught fire after being shelled by Ukrainian armed forces at the Zaporizhia region, uh, stated Governor Belitsky. Now, why is it the Iranians, I mean, the uh, Ukrainians want to keep blowing up nuclear power plants, you know, in the Kerchk? It's been verified now. That's the reason that they did this big invasion of Russia was they were hoping to get to the Kerch nuclear power plant, and God knows what they might have done to it. 
I, I guess they're just trying to, to uh, create a nuclear incident uh, so that they can, well, I don't know, drag the world into World War III. I mean, th these people are crazy, man. All right, so currently all six reactors at the plant are in cold shutdown with no threat of a steam explosion or other consequences. The radiation levels around the plant are normal. Emergency services are working at the scene of the fire to extinguish the hot spots. The situation is fully under control and poses no threat to the plant or the residents, uh, clarified head of, head of the region. So, yeah, I mean... Boy, it doesn't seem like it. it's kind of like, oh, wow, you know, there was a nuclear power plant on fire today. I guess I'll just go to work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> clean my gutters out. I guess that's what I did today. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens tomorrow, right? I mean, holy shit. I, I kind of feel like the Canadian prepper when he talks like, you know, what was it that saying that uh, you can live a decade and nothing happens and then you live uh, a couple of months and the whole world explodes i i don't know was it Lenin? i think that said that uh this is a new um channel that i've been following it's called adam and uh it says israel has the drone ability to strike a kitchen table in tehran from thousands of miles away however they chose to drop 2,000 pound bombs on a school sheltering displaced women and children while they were praying my god I, I can't show you the, the horrific uh, aftermath of this. Uh, in fact, they were saying that, that to identify how many children that the charred remains of the people from those 2,000-pound bombs couldn't be identified. The only the, the ashes that were left from them burning to death, uh, they would group them up and they'd say, well, this must have been a child and this must have been a woman. And the, I mean, oh, yeah, well, never mind. I mean, so another, hey, we're mowing the mowing the grass, mowing the grass. All the right wing lunatics, all the left wing lunatics. Don't worry, man. We will soon wipe out all two million Palestinians, and then it, I guess it will be all over, right? I don't know. That seems to be what the Christians in the United States want. I don't get it. I, I, I personally, I'm against genocide. I don't know. I, I call me a radical. I guess I, I must be because. I neither can support Trump or Biden because they, and then Kamala, she comes out, what was it she said? She goes, we're going to have a ceasefire. We're going to have a ceasefire. And in the meantime, they're giving 2,000 pound bombs to Israel to, to bomb on the Palestinians every single day. I hope Muslims aren't falling for that stupid shit. You know, the Biden administration is the, is the most genocidal administration that's ever existed. They hate Arabs. They hate you, Muslims. The Democrats hate you. And a lot of Republicans, too. Just saying. Uh, okay, this was, this was an interesting one because I, I tell you, I, I can't stand our media anymore in the United States. But I'm just going to read you this one. Uh, your reaction. CNN's Dana Bash. Why the hell does anybody talk to Dana Bash? I, it's kind of like, what's that woman on 60 Minutes that interviewed Trump and goes, The Hunter Biden laptop, that's a discredited story. We don't know what you're talking about, Trump. You know, and, 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 and Trump's like, what are you talking about? It, it was real. Of course, we found out later. Uh, Ask J.D. Vance why he's criticizing Tim Waltz, who served in the military for 24 years and not Donald Trump, who did not serve but claimed he had done, had bone spurs with the help of his father. Do you find that shameful too? Didn't you see how this is a loaded question? Do you see how the media skews everything? I mean... They're buying for the Democratic Party. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And they're not, not, even, not even just a remotely uh, 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 not partisan question. But anyway, let's, let's hear his response. Dana Bash, one last question. Donald Trump, he received a medical draft deferment, bone spurs, avoiding the Vietnam War, reportedly as a favor to his father. Do you find that shameful too? J.D. Vance, I think that Donald Trump didn't serve in the military, but he didn't lie about it. Dana, I've known Donald Trump for a long time. He really honors our, our, our Democrats. So you think he honors me for my service? Donald Trump didn't lie about serving in the military. He didn't say that he went to Vietnam when he didn't. This is the problem. I don't criticize anybody whether they served in our country or not. I think it's honorable to serve, but obviously a lot of people have reasons for not serving. I criticize somebody for embellishing their record, for lying, saying, I went to war, Dana. Do you think that's a problem that he said, I went to war, but he didn't? Actually, it seems to be a problem to me 
Well, they've corrected that. Let's move on to another important issue to voters. So if you didn't know, Tim Walsh claimed that he went to Iraq and it, it, actually he retired so that he wouldn't have to go. And he claimed he was a sergeant major. And I mean, it, it, if you're not following social media, I mean, I, what can I tell you? But I did like J.D. Vance's response there. I wish I could be that that nimble on my feet. You know, if somebody puts me on the spot, I'm just, you know, but sometimes, I mean, you know, I, I, although I do want to carry on conversations. So uh, here's a peacemaker. Um, Ukraine carried out a missile attack on a nuclear power plant in Kursk. Ukrainians attacked the Russian nuclear power plant in Kursk with missiles. If the Russians had not shot down the missiles, there could have been a Chernobyl 10 times 10. And that's what I was telling you. Uh, well, I didn't tell you about the missiles that they launched. And the, uh, luckily, I don't know, I guess the damn Russian air defenses must be outstanding, don't you think? Somehow they were able to shoot them all down. So anyway, uh, Russia told the International Atomic Agency that Ukraine carried out a missile attack on the Kursk nuclear power plant. According to Russian authorities, all the missiles fired were successfully shot down, so there's no threat to the nuclear power plant. The Russians even provided the IEA, IAEA with photos of the debris from the downed missiles as evidence. I mean, do you see how the United Nations is a freaking useless organization? I mean, here's Russia. I mean, they're trying to play by the rules. They're saying, look, man... You know, they're trying to blow up a freaking nuclear power plant. We're giving you the evidence. Why don't you do something about it, United Nations? But it does give them a lot of traction in the court of world opinion. And so if you didn't know that all the nations in the world are on Russia's side, for the most part, and against the West, it's becoming more and more. And this is how you play diplomacy. This is called geopolitics. And uh, so Russia, and I won't read a fragment, um, but also the whole world. So, okay, it, Russia, it means that Kiev has endangered not only Russia and Europe, but also the whole world. If Russians had not shot down the missiles, a disaster comparable to Chernobyl times 10 could have occurred, and the consequences of such an attack could have forced Russia to use nuclear weapons. Russia closed the nuclear power plant precisely because of the Ukraine invasion of the region, but it takes a long time to cool a nuclear reactor. Now, I don't know. If you know a bit about nuclear reactors, I mean, I'm just assuming that's true. I guess it does take a while for it to cool down. Can you imagine the heat in there with a nuclear reaction going on? Uh, moreover, a strike on a nuclear waste treatment facility would cause other serious problems. The Ukrainians also claim that they have recently managed to take the settlement of Parush in the Bel Belgorod region, this settlement is located just two and a half kilometers from the border. If this report is true, it means the Ukrainians are using another brigade that was originally deployed in the Sumy region to create a new battlefield in another Russian region. It should be added that the Baranotsk region is also under threat. You know, they claim they're going after military targets, but it seems they have a seems to be more focused on civilian targets and civilian infrastructure than anything else. I think it's. Um, I think it's an escalation to some degree, but I think also it's a it's a sign of a desperation. Uh, they're, um, they're basically a suicide mission for the soldiers that the Ukrainian soldiers that are launched this. I think suffering. Uh, I've seen some numbers as far as a large number of armor vehicles, UAVs, um, MLRS. I, I think um, it will not affect the strategic outcome. I think it's more. Um, it's probably being uh, pushed by Western uh, sponsors. Biden administration shows some type of potential uh, gains in, in that area on where we, you know, that's basically sucking our budget in like a black hole. I, I'm very suspicious as far as the planning and the targeting information that was provided. So I'm, it would not surprise me if uh, Western uh, elements or advisors were involved on this boy i tell you i never thought that the ukrainians were so powerful i mean i good god i mean to go up against the russians i mean good i mean and the russians oh by the way i a little tidbit of stuff the uh the new russian t-80 tanks now you say oh the t-80 that's an old tank no what they've been doing is they re uh re-engineered a factory 
to uh, bring in the old Soviet uh, T-80 tanks, and they're completely upgrading them. New, new, new guns, electronic warfare, anti-drone technology. They're completely just re... I mean, it's really basically a new tank. I guess you could call it like the T-80C. <laughs> you know, there's probably the T-80A, and then there was the T-80B, and so now we got the T-80C. But they're coming off the assembly lines uh, in record numbers. So they'll soon be in the battle uh, on, on the Ukraine. I, I don't see how Ukraine's going to last much longer. I, I just don't see it. I mean, good God, the Russians are doing things that are, that are insane. Uh, Douglas McGregor, breaking. Uh, Iran had to deliver hundreds of ballistic missiles to Russia. So you can see the weapons are going back and forth from Iran to Russia. Uh, that was from Reuters. Uh, Let's see, uh, this was an interesting one. DD Geopolitics, Serbs gather to protest lithium mining. Several tens of thousands of people posted, posted in Belgorod, Belgorod, against the opening of a lithium mine. The uh, multinational company Rio Tinto proposed opening the mine in the region around the town of Lanitska. Now, the reason why they're protesting is that's farmland. And they're saying that this lithium mine will just poison all that land around the area and, and, and they'll starve to death. But the West will get its lithium. I wonder who's going to win. We'll see. Many Serbians are concerned about the environmental impact of the mining project, fearing it could lead to pollution and destruction of local ecosystems, which were significantly damaged by NATO during the 90s. Well, in the 90s, when we bombed the shit out of them, NATO did anyway, that freaking terrorist organization, Ah, uh, Douglas McGregor, and this was an, uh, just an interesting story. I mean, I, I, I don't know why he was highlighting this, but it is interesting. Eight cancer doctors were among the 62 passengers and crew who died when a Brazilian airliner uh, fell from the sky. So I, I don't know if you knew, but the, there was a plane crash in Brazil. Everybody on board died. Uh, but then I guess I, what the implication here to me is that maybe it was brought down intentionally to kill these cancer doctors. What do you think? Conspiracy theory or real thing? Eight cancer specialists were among the 62 passengers who tragically perished when it plummeted from the sky and erupted in flames. The group included six prominent oncologists and two fin final year resident medics who were traveling from their home city of Cascaval to attend a cancer conference in Sao Paulo. The twin engine turboprop ATR 72-500 operated by Vofas Airline, crashed into a gated community on Friday. Boy, imagine, a, I mean, here I am in a gated community. Imagine a plane coming down <laughs> in your gated community. Holy shit. Uh, on Friday, resulting in the loss of everyone on board the plane. Now, he didn't say, the thing I, be, I would be wondering is, did anybody in the gated community die? I, I don't know, man. Now, can you tell me? I mean, uh, uh, oh, this was, this was another one. I, I don't know if you knew, I mean, London has fallen. <laughs> I mean, you know, not only are they arrested, well, we're going to get into more of that, but this was, this was interesting, and I'm proud of the Irish, because uh, I've got Irish blood in my veins, so I'm proud of them. Thousands of Irish pa patriots are currently marching against mass immigration in the southern city of Limerick, which was previously considered a left-wing stronghold. This is incredible. Ireland is rising. Now, I wonder how many of those are going to end up in jail as Britain cracks down. And there was a meme that, that was put up. It was, uh, uh, we were t they were talking about the Second Amendment. So no Second Amendment means no free speech. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, anyway, so that was, it's that Brazil, I mean, Br Britons gave up their guns long ago. May we never give up our guns in the United States. Uh, this, uh, now, this is Jason Hinkle. I don't, I don't know whether to believe this or not, but he says, breaking, Venezuelan inflation sank to a record 40-year low of 0.7% in July. Who knows? Uh, Laura Loomer, boy, I tell you, she's, uh, she's a spitfire uh, woman, isn't she? Oh, my God, the stuff she reports on it. I don't know where she gets all her information. And I have yet to really find anything she's been totally incorrect on. Now, maybe she does get a little flamboyant sometimes, but uh, Judiciary GOP and House GOP needs to investigate Quiller Al and Mike Nellis and their relationship with Judge Merchan. Now, if you don't know, Judge, Judge Merchan, he's the, that lunatic up in uh, New York that just convicted Trump of, what, 34 felonies or <laughs> whatever it was. I mean, I don't even know. But this is, this is the whole story. Kamala Harris campaign. Oh, this was another story. 
I, I don't know if you've been following along on X, but they're saying that the, the campaign is using AI. And I, well, I'll just read you what she says. Kamala Harris' campaign is using AI to manipulate her campaign photos and videos. It's all being orchestrated by Mike Millis, a senior advisor to Kamala Harris who works with Lauren Merchant, the daughter of the judge, Judge or Juan Merchant. Okay, when I, when I said, I forgot. That, that's the daughter. Now she, she collects millions of dollars for the Democrat Party. She does, and, and which should have disqualified uh, Juan Merchant, Merchant from, from being able to, to try the case. As previously reported, why won't the media talk about this? Kamala Harris' photos and videos are manipulated. You can see it. It's obvious. She's never had any traction, and now the media is using AI to dupe you into thinking that her crowds are real and when they are fake. Lauren Merchant's business party even brags about being an advisor to Kamala Harris and the AI expert in his ex-profile. The media is pushing out her pics, but zoom in on these pics below. They're cl clearly manipulated by AI. You can see... Now, this is pretty funny because a lot of people are reporting on this. <laughs> I mean, you can see hands and fingers popping out of people's bodies due to the o AI overlays. This form of psychological warfare and election interference and manipulation see below. All right. Black in the Empire. I'll post this until Zionism supporters wake up. If you're not careful... Newspapers will have you hating the people you are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. That was a quote by Malcolm X, and he just put that in his tweet, or his ex post, excuse me. How many Palestinians can Zionists slaughter before they're not the victims? So, and of course, that was in response to the, the post that I talked about. Jason Hinkle, Israel just murdered 100 Gazan shelter in a school. I'm speechless, and I, I can't show you the photo. I mean, good God. Oh. All right, so let's keep going. Um, and this was from Elon Musk. <laughs> By the way, 8 o'clock uh, today, uh, are you going to watch the Trump uh, interview with Elon Musk? And by the way, I'm sure that Trump's going to be back on, on X, even though I think that's probably a breach of his agreement with Truth Social. But with an election going on and everything, I don't think Truth Social, of course, he basically funds Truth Social anyway. So, But I, I do feel that we're going to get some Trump mean tweets after tonight at 8 p.m. Be sure and watch the interview. But anyway, so um, Facebook, a.k.a. Meta, can never be trusted. Facebook censors renowned U.K. biologists for opposing male athletes in women's sports. Won't give you the whole story. I just and There's a picture of the guy. I don't know who he is. Breaking. A young man in Britain has been sentenced, and this is what I was telling you. This is why London has fallen. Has been sentenced to 36 months in prison for a satirical post on X about the riots. What's going on? That was Peter Sweden, S-W-E-D-N. You can follow him on, on X. Megatron, just in. The EU's running out of excuses for Israeli atrocities. EU foreign policy keep Joseph Borrell. Number of victims of Israeli school attacks leaves us in deep shock. At least 10 schools have been targeted in recent weeks, and there is no justification for these massacres. So you can tell a lot of people are reporting on these Israeli atrocities. Um, oh, this was a Trump army breaking. The governor of Louisiana, Jeff Landry, has just signed a bill into law requiring voters to provide proof of citizenship in order to vote. Do you support this? Now, the reason why I'm reading this again, because I think I was on my last video, you need to contact your governor. Even here in Florida, we've got illegal aliens on our voter rolls. We need, like Glenn Youngkin and now the Louisiana governor, we need all governors, well, in the red states, the Democrat states don't care. They're going to cheat. They're going to cheat beyond belief. That's what Democrats do. They're cheaters. They're, they're dishonest people. They're, they're malicious. But at least in the Republican states, we can clean up our damn voter rolls. Contact your governor if you live in a red state, especially if you live here in Florida, which I will be. I actually already did. I already sent uh, DeSantis a, 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 an email Probably won't do no damn good, but I said, look, man, we need to clean up our voter rolls like Louisiana and, and uh, Virginia are doing. Uh, UK Metropolitan Police Commissioner Mike Rowley uh, threatens American citizens, including Elon Musk, with extradition over social media posts. <laughs> UK, that, that came out of the UK. Everybody's been tweeting about it, you know, that the UK is going to send the... Uh, uh, what is it, MI6 over here to arrest Americans and, and drag them back to Britain and put them on trial for anything we post on X. 
Good luck with that. All right. And this is Dr. Simon Goddick, and we'll be finishing up the video here in just a second. I have three questions. Why is the U.S. military in Syria without an invitation from the Syrian government? Why is the U.S. occupying Syria's oil-rich regions and stealing its resources? Good question. How would the United States respond if another country did the same on their soil? I imagine the Chinese base right down the street from you, pumping oil out of our ground and sending it back to China. How would you feel about that? I don't think I'd feel real good about that. Would you? But anyway, I don't think this base is going to be there much longer. <laughs> As I told you, I mean, it's, it's sad. All the Americans in Iraq and in Syria are going to die. Just, just telling you, it's, it's, it's inevitable. And then, of course, the U.S. is, the, your, your Democrat lunatic uh, uh, politicians are going to use that as an excuse to go to war with Iran. And, and of course, uh, I'm Lebanon. Uh, breaking U.S. military base in Syria reportedly struck by Iranian-backed drones. So they're already, they're already hitting the bases. And Iraq just came out with a statement. I don't know if you knew. Uh, they're saying, get the hell out. Get the hell out. And then, so I mean, even Iraq is going to attack that base. Is it going to be the Iraqi militias or is it going to be actually the Iraqi government? I don't know, man. I think it's going to be both. Uh, I, I do want to post this parody, but I can't. I'm not going to do it in this video, but it's a woman. Uh, well, let's just watch just two seconds. Uh, well, I, I might get a copyright because she's making fun of Kamala Harris. I'm not going to do it. Uh, Douglas McGregor breaking Georgia accepts new rule requiring all counties preserve voting machine memory cards after the discovery of 1.7 million missing ballot images from 2020. I told you, Governor Kemp is a Democrat. <coughs> 1.7 million images went missing. That's against federal law. You're supposed to preserve the ballot images. We need to get rid of voting machines. We need same day voting. We need paper ballots, but of course that's never going to happen because the Democrats want to cheat. Uh, Wagner affiliated channels report a massive column with Wagner flags is already moving towards Kursk front. I think I reported on that. Uh, let's see. Dublin down BLM rights and COVID lockdowns were an interesting choice by Harris in picking Waltz. While the world burns, Harris waltzes. And anyway, she's talking about the fact that, I mean, good God. He locked down Minnesota, <laughs> I think, for like two years, man. The kids, the kids didn't even go back to school for like a year. I mean, he was a freaking dictator of Minnesota. I mean, it was unbelievable. All right, let's keep going. Breaking, Iran confirmed that informed Arab embassies, including, well, and so I wanted to list these again, okay, because today is the day that Iran's going to attack. So before the attack, they informed the Arab embassies, including Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, Qatar, and the UAE, that it does not care if the revenge war turns into an outbreak of regional war. It also told them that they will also be targeted if they intervene in response uh, to uh, protect Israel. So I, I do believe, and I, I don't remember, I think I've seen information that all these Arab countries are going to stand aside, and whatever Iran decides to do, it's just between the United States, Israel, and Iran. Of course, we got to include Lebanon and the Yemen in on the war. And then, of course, Russia. Oh, by the way, that, that was another thing that's been confirmed. We knew all those transport planes were flying into Iran, but nobody knew for sure whether they were really giving them a lot of uh, weapons and, and, of course, electronic warfare. There's a lot of speculation. That's all been confirmed. Iran's uh, now been armed to the teeth, or as much as they could be in the last couple of weeks here. Uh, so let's just keep going. So th this was th this. Just in, Russian IL-76 aircraft known for transporting heavy weapons has landed in Tehran. The time is near. So yeah, that, it should be today, be, in my opinion. Um, it's, this is uh, ZLATTI-71, Zlati-71. It's difficult to get a clear, clear picture of what's go really going on in the UK. Nationalists and migrants are clashing with each other and the violence is escalating. I talked about, you know, the fact that um, uh, Ireland is, is up in arms or protesting anyway. There have been reports of incidents in, in Stoke where nationalists have been attacked and stabbed, as well as attacks on black people who have been beaten by nationalists in, in another city. I have deleted a post I made from a very trustworthy source, including videos, because it will only fuel hatred. 
and then it just goes on from there. Russian and Iranian accounts are claiming that Mosmruk Dash BN long range communication jamming systems provided by Russia have been installed in several locations across Iran. These systems are specifically designed to disrupt and jam any communication between ground and air forces as well as high frequency middle, military satellite communications. So I'm pretty sure that probably everything's been done on that. Russians are manning that equipment in, in Iran. So you can see the shit is about to hit the fan. Peace out! Stay free.